Hello everybody, Grace Still Plays, and today I wanted to bring you guys a quick tip guide involving the Long Dark, specifically for the Interloper difficulty level. Now all these tips will work if you play something outside of the Interloper difficulty level, but if you're playing Interloper, these tips are specifically made for that. Now before we begin, I just want to mention that if you've never played the Long Dark before, make sure to pick one of the other difficulty levels in order to learn the mechanics of the game and how the maps work and to understand the different systems within the game before going into interloper difficulty level interloper is the hardest difficulty level of a survival game that i have seen that is not just straight the game cheating in order to kill you this tutorial is going to be for staying alive long enough to get what you need in order to forge improvised tools at the forge located in the Riken, which is over in Desolation Point. If you'd like a follow-up tutorial for what I think is a good plan after obtaining those tools, feel free to let me know in the comments section below and I'll do a follow-up for that. So let's start on the tips for interloper difficulty. First off, make sure that you have a plan. The plan is typically to get a heavy hammer, obtain six to seven pieces of coal, and make yourself a couple of improvised hatchets and knives at the Riken located in Desolation Point. Now, hatchets and knives will make your continued survival in the interloper mode substantially easier as they're integral to harvesting from corpses, chopping saplings, and opening cans. Depending on where you start off, this can be simpler or more difficult difficult and out of all of the maps that I have seen the three that you will start off in is Timberwolf Mountain, Pleasant Valley, and Desolation Point. Up to this point through several several go-throughs in the interloper mode I have never spawned in Mystery Lake or Coastal Highway. Other things to look out for while making your trek to Desolation Point if you don't already start there are can openers, sewing kits, crowbars, and hacksaws. The can opener is important not only due to its rarity on interloper mode, but also because it's the only tool that can be used to open up canned food until you get improvised tools. Smashing open cans of food will lose you upward of 35% of the contents of the food, and in interloper mode you'll quickly find out that food is one of the most difficult necessities to find, until you can reliably count on a self-renewing food source. Sewing kits become extremely important on interloper mode due to the rarity of new clothing in general. If you allow a piece of clothing to reach 0% condition, it becomes worn out and then it's useless and can't be repaired. Hacksaws pull a double duty. Not only are they good for obtaining scrap metal in order to utilize the forge to make tools that will become important for your survival, but it can also be used to butcher corpses before you get your hands on some improvised tools. Dealing with the food issue in the early game, harvest reishi mushrooms and rose hips whenever possible. Remember that two reishi mushrooms make a cup of reishi tea, and 25 rose hips make a cup of rose hip tea. And both teas can be drank for 100 calories each, as well as 30% hydration. This doesn't sound like much, but in interloper mode, literally every calorie counts. Speaking of which, also be on the lookout for cattail plants, as each stalk can be eaten for 150 calories, and the cattail heads can be used as tinder. Cattail stalks never decay, they're very light, and they never have the chance to give the player food poisoning. They're also typically found near frozen water sources such as ponds or streams. To go along with the harvested food sources, always be on the lookout for herbal tea packs and coffee tins. Besides providing valuable afflictions, remember that they too give 100 calories when brewed and drank. Get used to operating at less than 100% condition. Interloper mode will test most of your character's needs, and most often the ones being tested are cold and the lack of food. For this reason, I recommend never eating unless you're going to sleep. You'll lose 1% condition per hour that you're starving, but there's a tip coming up to combat this. When you sleep, Sleep as many consecutive hours as you can. Condition is recovered with consecutive bonuses, meaning sleeping nine hours in a row will gain you more condition compared to sleeping, say, three hours, three times in a row. This means that the best strategy is to get as absolutely close to exhausted as possible, check to see exactly how many calories will be burned for the amount of sleep that you want, and then eat that amount of calories as exact as possible followed by taking a drink so as not to become dehydrated while sleeping, and then to sleep for that many hours in a row. 
Doing this will make the sting of having your condition constantly being reduced by starvation during the daytime or in the cold much less. To give you an example of how significant the consecutive sleep is, I regained 30% condition from sleeping 11 hours in a row. If you were starving for the other 13 hours of the day, you'd still be topped off condition-wise. Understand that everything is much more rare in interloper mode. This includes matches. Matches are the lifeline of your survival as they allow you to make fire. And for this reason, never waste a match if at all possible. And if you do start a fire, do as much at that fire as you possibly can. Boil water, make teas and coffee, cook raw food, and always take a brand from the fire before you leave. A brand has several uses. It keeps you slightly warmer than normal, it can be brandished at wolves if they begin stalking you, and it can be used as a light source when traversing through the mines or searching buildings at night. Speaking of wolves and fires, if you're being stalked by a wolf and you have no chance of getting to shelter, let's say you're encumbered or exhausted and you can't run away and you'd otherwise be screwed, try to snap immediately, make a fire. Even starting the fire will spook the wolf off. And if the fire goes off, use it for as much as you can. If it doesn't, the cost is one match and you may save yourself from a wolf attack, which is probably worth it. Note that the wolves in interloper mode are substantially stronger and more deadly than in any of the other modes. If you have a hacksaw and you come across a deer carcass and it's feasible, meaning there's a structure nearby for you to get some rest in or take shelter in case the weather gets terrible, always butcher the creature. Not only will this get you around a thousand calories of possible food, but it will also get you hide and gut nearly on. Speaking of which, Almost any time that you're outside and you're going to be doing something that takes in a large amount of time, such as butchering, you are going to have to create a fire. Understand that in the interloper mode, the outside temperature is going to be substantially colder than in any other mode, and you will freeze if you do not have a fire that will keep you at a positive ambient temperature. Speaking of hide and gut, if you do obtain these items early on, keep them on the ground inside of a structure so that they can begin curing, especially if you're staying in the area to say harvest or look around or just resting in a bed. This will get the curing process started and it'll also keep them from degrading from being on you in the outdoors. Typically I'll leave my hide and gut curing inside of what's going to be my safe house after I get to the Riken and fashion my improvised tools. This will have them cured and will have them ready to go when you're ready to be self-sufficient, but it's also going to keep your encumbrance level down check everywhere, then double check everywhere. In interloper mode, a single granola bar is going to be the difference between regaining several conditional percents while sleeping or starving. Check every shelf, check every drawer, but also make sure to check behind everything. The developers have hidden some very important items in the strangest of places, such as under the seat in the benches of canoes. If at all possible, never use the pass time option. If there's a blizzard outside and you're waiting for it to pass, tear down curtains for cloth or break down chairs or crates for reclaimed wood. Repair your clothing if it's significantly damaged or do another check through the building for loot. Every moment in interloper mode counts and you want to be doing something constructive at all times. Know where the closest bed is. You don't start with a bedroll in interloper mode, and it's very possible that you're not going to find a bedroll for a long time. Although being exhausted, much like starving, only reduces condition by 1% an hour, being able to sleep and regain your condition is one of the most important parts of the strategy for staying alive in interloper mode. For that reason, use a map if you need to in order to know how far and where the next bed is. Maps are going to be provided in the description below if you need them, and also remember that you can sleep inside of vehicles, but watch out. Most vehicles are extremely cold, even when being used for rest. One of the exceptions is the pickup truck that's located in the Pleasant Valley Outbuildings Big Red Barn located at the very center of Pleasant Valley. And finally, make sure that you have a heavy hammer and at least six pieces of coal when you get to the forge at the Riken, located in Desolation Point, as well as enough scrap metal or the ability to get scrap metal by having a hacksaw so that you're going to be able to make all of the tools and items that you'll need. Although there's a few pieces of coal located in the crate next to the forge at the Riken, it's not enough for what you're going to want. You're going to need to come prepared with coal of your own. I would suggest to bring around four to five pieces of your own coal. They can be found in plenty 
at all of the mines located in Desolation Point, or for instance, in the mine that's going to connect Pleasant Valley to Coastal Highway. Folks, I hope that this tip guide helps you a little bit in your survival using the interloper mode in the long dark. It's one of my absolute favorite modes in the long dark, and I really think that it is something that anyone who buys the game should experience. It is a fantastic mode, and it really tests your ability to stay alive in a game. I also understand that this tip guide is very brief and somewhat short. I wanted to make it as such, but I wanted to make all of the tips valuable for that survival. So remember, if you have any suggestions, suggestions on additional guides that you would like to see from me for the long dark feel free to let me know in the comment section below until the next time guys stay foxy and much love